thank you everyone for joining here. So I think I'm going to tell you an exciting story about the uh, Nomad, the alternative container orchestrator that usually people are using Kubernetes. So even though four years was has started using the Nomad as container orchestrator and industry. So we were headed, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Yahya Fadua Fati, um, head of engineering platform at F3. I'm doing open source at GitHub and also yelling at Dublin and Twitter. So before to understand more about the Nomad, I think it will be... Yes, hello. Okay. So before to understand more about the Nomad, it would be better if I tell you guys about uh, the industry that implemented Nomad. So, so MV3, MV3 is actually the aquaculture startup in Indonesia that we try to help the farmers by providing essential resources from feed to financing. And we have two main products that are actually working. Uh, we have the automated fish feeder and cultivation for aquaculture solution. And we also ensure sustainability success in the fish farming industry. We are trying to tackle some issue in Indonesia actually, we, where incumbent fish farmer have a key issue. Uh, commonly, farmer lose up to 70% of fish food, uh, somehow due to the uneven spread of fish food and overfeeding the fish. So our fish feeder try to optimize feed usage, while cultivation and aquaculture solution uh, help farmer better manage feed precast and distribution. So this is the image showcase is our advisory uh, fish feeder which designed to feed evenly ensuring no wastage and farmers can control monitor uh, the feeding process remotely using the mobile app. And farmer connected to that device a small box that we call control box that so farmer can connect it to the device everywhere. So, uh, basically trying to revolutionize aquaculture with a hub for expert advice, affordable fish feed, and direct market access. And farmer gained the tools, resources, and opportunities that needed to be succeed, connecting them with the buyer across Indonesia. In basically we don't always communicate uh, directly with the customer but sometimes they want a deeper understanding about the process. So this means we've had to streamline a lot of process uh, for operation to make faster decision, which involve many running uh, multiple services. So let's get to the main topic. So what is actually Nomad and why is Nomad? So in Indonesia, uh, Nomad is actually not very common to be used as the container orchestrator. So many people always ask me, what is Nomad? You know, and following by, why Nomad? It's like, you know, somehow Nomad is kind of the indie band of container orchestrator that hardly anyone heard of it. And somehow you feel like, you know, we've got to check this out and then it will somehow change our playlist, you know. And that's how it feels like when uh, we first time meet the Nomad. So, what is Nomad? It's usually come in package with the console and phone. Now, I know some, some of the people might be thinking, Nomad, you know, never heard of it, right? So, Nomad is actually the other container orchestrator out there. You know, while Kubernetes is much more popular, Nomad offers a simpler and more streamlined approach. Somehow it uses only a single binary to handle the Nomad client and server. But what really sets apart is the architecture. You see on the image we have two different architectures between the Nomad on the top and the bottom is common with the Kubernetes controller. And unlike Kubernetes, which was has a lot of controller managing everything, Nomad takes a simpler approach. You know, it's driven by straightforward API and HDL deployment configuration that make it much more easier to understand and to manage. And the best part is when you pair Nomad with the console and the fault and all the housing of uh, tools, supposed to be fault right there in the right, you get much seamless service discovery and security that you know just work. 
So while you know Kubernetes is out there trying to be everything for everyone, now let's stick to what it does, being simple, stable, and surprisingly powerful. I know it sounds kind of too busy, but you will hear that later. So this is actually uh, our architecture in the first time we are trying to implement the Nomad. We have Nomad server on the top, and it's working with the consensus algorithm. We also have the Nomad worker at the bottom that running the container application. The Nomad server is actually working for the distribution of the jobs. And then we have this console server. The console is actually working as the uh, service discovery. In the earlier Nomad uh, version, Nomad must use the console server as the uh, service discovery. But in the newest versions on Nomad, you actually don't need using the console server as the service discovery. But it would be way better if using the console server, it's working like a service mesh in the Kubernetes. So in the nutshell, this whole setup, it's like you know, well-oiled machine, right? Uh, and it's kind of organized a circus. Everything has a place, everyone knows their role, and it all comes together to keep the show running. So why Nomad? In the early 2020, before we figure out about Nomad, we are managing more than like 40 services and the database with the Docker. And somehow, when the trouble of using the Docker is talked within the team, Kubernetes pops into the conversation. It always pops into the conversation when we are trying to move from the Docker. Uh, it's always start with the Kubernetes. And we thought uh, to research about the Kubernetes first, especially with the price. Then, you know, we check the price tag. We try to analyze with the Kubernetes back then. And then, sure, it, it kind of impressive, it, but at this time, we actually don't need that kind of power. So we quickly realized that somehow Kubernetes at this stage, at the moment at the FE3, at the 2020, would be like you know bringing Bazooka to a snowball fight, way overkill, and we figured to stick with something much more speed for us. So let's get uh, talk with the experience. Uh, I think I'm going to tell you guys about uh, since. 2020 to 2023, yeah, four years. So in the early 2020, we were cruising along with the Nomad. Somehow everything was running smoothly, no, nothing happened, no major hiccups, and then we were, we were all thinking somehow this is great. And fast forward to 2024, 2023, things got a little bit more complex. Our small cozy setup had to scale up and suddenly, you know, we are dealing with the challenge of growth. But here's the thing. When the scaling, scaling can be, could be daunting, it also somehow we're thinking this is where the real fun begins. Over the past four years, we've navigated from simplicity to a much more sophisticated, scalable setup. We've grown, adapted, and even loved along the way. Because, you know, in the world of infrastructure, when we are dealing with some trouble and everything in infrastructure, if you're not finding kind of humor in the challenge, maybe you're probably not looking hard enough. So let's start with the 2020. This is our first time uh, trying to research and then implement the Nomad to the production level traffic. So, in the earlier, we were deep into the Docker, which was you know, great for spinning up containers quickly, but somehow managing this container pretty chaotic and exhausting. Every day is, you know, feels like a babysitting server just to keep everything running smoothly. Then came the big debate. You know, we, we, we also talking about there is some alternative container orchestrator out there, Kubernetes, Rancher, OpenSieve, and somehow we just looking onto the Nomad. You know, Kubernetes was like back then, uh, you know, a shiny new toy everyone wanted, but it came with a lot of string attached, fender locking, high cost, and complexity that didn't qu quite fit our needs. So at the moment, Kubernetes is actually not on our option. That's when we started to looking into the Nomad. 
and we realized we needed a solution that lightweight, flexible, and you know, aligned with our goal of maintaining control over infrastructure. And somehow Nomad promised the simplicity we needed without compromising uh, with the power we wanted. All right, so you see, deploying Nomad back then was a bit like following one of those how to draw an on owl tutorial where you start with the step one, draw some circle, and then somehow we just become a full-fledged owl. Sounds simple at first, but somehow become much more complex. This is our experience in the 2020, and it's come with a challenge in early implementation. Because uh, understanding the nomad and console was like, you know, step one, countless hours, researching, experimenting, and trying to make sense of it. By the end of it, somehow we just had more circle. And the seamless application deployment is also comes with a problem because there is not many tools that uh, deploy with seamless deployment application on the internet. So we just figure out by upgrading, you know, the pipeline on the GitHub and the GitLab, and also the Bitbucket. So we just pretty challenging to integrate the application deployment. In the end, uh, we went from a couple of circle in the 2020, uh, from a couple of circle to the full-fledged owl, an owl that barely handled the production level traffic. So if you're thinking about adopting Nomad, just remember, every owl start with the circle and a lot of patience. All right, so this is the result and impact from within the 2020. Uh, somehow we just running services on production and staging environment like it was no big deal at all. We have 50 more 50 plus containers back then and five database, three Nomad agent and three to seven Nomad workers. It just cost us around 500 US dollar in the end of December 2020 until April 2021. And then somehow in the 2020, COVID-19 hits and the problem with the company, this demand took a off day, around 20% in Indonesia. And despite the, the downturn, Evisory still somehow, we still step up uh, helping over 800 fish farmer and distributing around 1,000 tons of fish across Indonesia. So let's talk next year about the 2021. We have, uh, this is a stable version when we're trying to implement the Nomad. We have a lot of problem here. We're trying to understand uh, the software engineering have a problem with experience using the Nomad because usually software engineering much more comfortable and common with the Kubernetes, right? So we also trying to figure out streamlining the deployment and at the end of it, we just making ourselves the CI/CD. And let's talk later with the fold and then the steep learning curve with the infrastructure engineer. Okay, let's do it. First up, uh, experience with the software engineer using Domat is like imagine handing your engineer the key to a spaceship. It's pretty cool, but except they never seen a spaceship before. That is was like when we started using the Nomad. Our engineer weren't exactly familiar with it, but thanks to Nomad UI, here's what is the screenshot, they had full control over the services. You know, it's almost like giving them a high-tech toy and watching them figure out how it works. A lot of trial and error, but they got, they got hang on it eventually. Next, uh, the streamlined deployment by making ourselves the CI CD. Uh, we realized that relying on external CI CD tools wasn't going to cut it. So we decided to streamline deployment by making ourselves the CI CD. And we called it GB. It's continuous integration and built instrument. Now, what you see here on the slide of the snapshot, TV in action, uh, this one is actually our SGL configuration. Sorry, it doesn't look quite right. So this is kind of like Kubernetes uh, deployment script. We write everything we need, send it off to the Nomad, and application deploy it. It just need a single script, actually. And on the right is actually TB process. We make ourselves the CI CD. Uh, we try to automate everything, so the experience with engineer uh, become not hard as it looks. And successfully, we built our, our own from the scratch. 
and it was like you know baking an oven on bread instead of buying it from the store except in this case the bread was like our entire deployment pipeline you know let me tell you nothing that's better than home bake automation okay but then we are being too pragmatic for using fold fold is, is actually one of the hasik tools that uh, usually managing the secrets and we were so pragmatic we might as well you know redefine the word we decided uh, to use fold uh, in our own special way it was one of those somehow we are so smart it's kind of actually stupid moments <laughs> but somehow we made it work I guess you could say we were innovatively foolish or foolishly innovative, depending on how you look at it. On the bright side, this configuration is kind of clean. This is the configuration that's supposed to be heaven for all applications that deploy into the Nomad. Uh, the configuration is kind of clean, straightforward, and gets the jobs done, everything uh, neatly laid out. Now the CPU, memory, and also the application configuration. But the problem is, Every, everything with this pragmatic is actually not secure because you know we basically expose our secrets like they are written on the post-it not stuck on our monitor and finally the steep learning curve for the infra engineer that actually maintaining the nomad there was like steep learning curve for infra engineer every infrastructure engineer had to get familiar with the nomad and let me tell you, it was like sending them to the boot camp. Uh, it actually didn't take too long to grasp the bestie. But the real kicker, they had to understand the low level of Nomad and console somehow when the when come in with the major issue and incident. You know, it's like you are going to a cooking class and realizing you need to know how to farm the wheat first. Yeah, it's, it's starting with the fun time with understanding the Noma, it feels easy and then steep to learning curve and somehow we just become stable again and somehow we get another problem again. So that is why uh, we just figure out we need to automate everything. So that is within the 2021. So this is our first major incident with the Noma. So we have some incident in 2021, uh, major incident in the issue. First up, we have the failure of Nomad agent, uh, the peer step. So one of our engineers actually decided to fix the volume plugin within the Nomad. Somehow it just sounds harmless, but it turned out that one little tweak is actually making everything uh, buggy and breaking. And suddenly one of our Nomad agents broke, the configuration just become broken and the build stats somehow just lost. And everything came, you know, crashing down. To fix it, we just need to recover build stats and add the quorum backends. So this is what it looks like uh, whenever we try, we figure out the normal is actually not working. Somehow, uh, it's not working because, you know, in the consensus algorithm, someone must be elected to be a leader, right? And somehow, one of the normal server is actually not working and the broken and somehow everyone just become the follower and leader is not elected. So to recover this and we just also add more the quorum and somehow everyone just become a follower. No one just elected to become leader. So how to fix this? Actually the nomad is actually making a documentation about it and it's actually easy to produce so you just need to recover the configuration and add the quad packs and it become normal again. And this one is actually bug with the CSI uh, volume plugging and this one uh, also the reason all the Nomad surface is actually not working. Uh, Nomad is actually not have the CSI volume plugin so the CSI volume plugin is actually a plugin that's supposed to be mount and attach volume to instances. So it's actually only happened on the single instance back then. And how we are fixing this, we just updated to the latest version and somehow it just still have a buggy and we just deleted the instances and never happened again. And it's only happened on the 2021. 
and also the wrong calculation for the allocation somehow uh, whenever the job is actually pushed to the nomad it's supposed to be allocated to another server and nomad is actually somehow it's not working on the single server and it's only happened on the single instance back then so back then we only need 20% of the resources and the service actually have like 40% free space and it's just not working and it keep going like it's not allocated good enough so uh, that's much more the issue about the nomad let's talk about the result and the impact so in the 2021 we met the TV our very own custom CICD tools uh, we re-architect high availability for Nomad. There is no happen of the major incident anymore into next year. And we also got smart with the, our resources using the spot instances. In terms of scale, we were running 100 plus containers and managing uh, 30 deployments a day. And despite all of this, we managed to keep our cost down about 3,000 US dollar by the end of the year. Okay, uh, now about the experience with the Nomad in 2022 to 2023. So we actually started the year with a bit good news. The uh, custom CICD, the in-house managing the CICD is actually usually much, much more heavily managed because, you know, we need to change to follow the business process and the development process, but we only needed to change it twice a year. There is also a time when we have six months, we didn't need to change it. That's kind of big win for us. We integrated with the fully with the Cloudflare and everything becomes seamless. An engineer could deploy to Nomad without just call uh, GB. Uh, and we even designed a software catalog using the Notion, gathering all the metrics and detail about the services in one place. And of course, we didn't stop there. We also implemented Nomad Autoscaler that integrated with monitoring Loki. It automatically scales up pods when the threshold is triggered and scale them back down when things settle. Now, here's a little behind the scenes look, uh, one of our software catalog, uh, which we built using the Notion. This isn't just list of, uh, the list of applications, it's actually our digital brain. This catalog has been a game changer for us. Not only does it keep us organized, it also makes onboarding new engineer a breeze, you know, much more easier. They can jump right in, access the information they need, and you know, get up to speed in no time. And this is what it looks like our, uh, our design architecture for integrated with the Nomad with monitoring the Loki and alert. So whenever uh, the job it's actually scale down and scale up with much more traffic. So the Loki will trigger the Nomad Autoscaler to raise up the scale. And this is what it looked like with the uh, design of the Nomad Autoscaler, the UI of the Nomad Autoscaler. And the result and impact in the 2022 and 2023, we had running double like 2,000 containers, containers running around and 200 deployments happening every day. And by the end of the 2022, we kept cost about 28,000 US dollar a month. In 2023, cost jumped around 58,000 a month. And the problem comes with the data traffic and it cost us about $7,000. Uh, we met some other stuff too, like moving our static site to object storage and rolling out our first internal development platform. So, this is our learning of using Nomad. And now the main difference with the Kubernetes and Nomad. Kubernetes is like the, you know, the friend who plans everything to the last details, uh, require big setup ton of maintenance and practically team of engineering to keep it running, somehow powerful. And we have Nomad. Uh, in the back 2020 to 2021, we only a single engineer to implement the Nomad, making the CI/CD, and also migrating all the from Docker to Nomad. It only need a single engineer. And 
in the end of the 2021, we also add more engineering because we have much more growth in the company. So we need much more uh, managing this moment. So, you know, here's the deal. If you are into big complex orchestration and like challenge, Kubernetes is your piece. But if you prefer something that's simple, no, Nomad is your best buddy. Now, here's the problem with our experience. Now, let's break down our misadventure. You know, deployment was a bit complex. We had to manage everything ourselves, which wasn't exactly straightforward. And the learning curve for our infra engineer, let's just say it wasn't a walk in a park, you know. And enterprise grade Nomad, it comes with a price tag and renaming namespace. It also have a problem with that, not as easy as it sound. And finding Nomad talent is kind of tough. And the community support wasn't as broad as we thought. We had uh, to take a pragmatic approach, which means uh, we did what we want, or we could with what we had. The documentation was a sparse, making it hard to figure things out. You know, in the end, we learned a lot. Uh, this is one of our uh, internal developer platform. This is uh, our learning from the using the Nomad. We must make, uh, because we follow the golden path from the uh, Spotify, we also trying to implement the internal developer platform. A list of all application. Uh, in the detail, we also have a code owner, the uh, detail of the monitoring, alert, uh, detail information. It also comes with the price uh, for every day that we could see on the summary how much spec uh, that we you know, still use or not. And then the change load, everything with the documentation, and we also have the scorecard. You know, from the much more like uh, the critical application must must uh, have the pointings, you know, scorecard because some of the service must be have managing well. And in the end, we all, we transition to Kubernetes actually. So you know, somehow Oracle, I actually manage four startup in the Indonesia. Uh, to to start up is actually managing with the nomad and uh, no four starts up is actually implement the nomad to other starts up with the enterprise grade is actually moved to the kubernetes and two other startup is actually still stay with the nomad and then this is what it look like how we manage to migrate the nomad with the kubernetes we have this cluster nomad and that is the kubernetes cluster uh, we merge the network and then we move all the service to Kubernetes. So in the Kubernetes could have connect to the service in the Nomad. So this is what it looks like with the uh, budget. So our main co focus is actually cost. And we also figure out, we didn't have actually budget cost in the July. We plan everything budget following the cost because the Nomad is actually still uh, managing to manage, but the problem with the cost on the enterprise grade. So in July, we got budget cost, and we actually starting to move from Nomad uh, from to Kubernetes around February to May. And around July, we actually full migrated to the Kubernetes. And then how this is what it looks like uh, when we are trying to uh, move the Kubernetes with the Nomad since from the 2024 when we are trying to move the uh, from Nomad to Kubernetes and slightly we come to the this part in the 50 hundred millions is it runs about 50,000 US dollar yeah the problem is when if we stay on the Nomad is actually could supposed to be right over here and then we, we move to the Kubernetes and we could managing the cost effectively. And when the right time using the Nomad, well, if simplicity and flexibility are your priorities, Nomad actually works well for small to medium workload. And Nomad is great for agnostic infrastructure needs, letting you stay cloud, cloud natural. But cost efficiency is actually true, but only up to a point. So when should you use Nomad? Uh, when you are up for a challenge. It's like, you know, mystery novel, but we more code and less sleep. 
Okay, the last part is, uh, you know, there is some thread in the Reddit is actually asking about what is look like with the nomad on the production level. There is a good two point that actually commenting here, and the first one, I don't know, he is just delayed the user. He's actually talking about the uh, nomad in the production level traffic, and it's usually they are using the small to medium workload application, but still have a problem with the CSI support the volume. And the last one is many people talking about this. They are love using the Nomad actually for the home lab server. So many people try to use the uh, Nomad with the Raspberry Pi and everything for the home lab server. You can see on the Twitter, uh, Google, you can say Nomad production level on the traffic and on the Google. So yeah, that's that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much. Have a